So I made a big table here of a bunch of limits and co-limits. Okay, so if we just look at the category, so so what this this top row is here is it's got a category, some notation, the product in the category. So this is takes two objects and, and forms a new object that satisfies a certain property. The co-product in a category, which takes two objects and forms an object in the category. An initial object, which is a special type of object in the category, and a terminal object. Okay, so an initial object of a category is an object which admits a unique morphism to every other object in the category. So uh, in, in a terminal object is, is kind of the opposite. It's an object where every object in the category maps to that object, and the map is unique. Um, these two things have nice, property, nice universal properties as well, um, and we'll describe that in a second. But if we look at sets, right? So I'm going to write the category here, the notation here. So the product is just the, the Cartesian product of two sets where you take the tuples. The coproduct is the disjoint union of two sets. The initial object is the empty set because for every set, the empty set has a function. There's a function from the empty set to that set. Uh, and then there's the terminal object, which is a point. So, every, so for every set, there's a function to the, the point here. Okay. So, um, uh, so there's the, so, so we, we can keep doing this and, and all these categories have, have what's called a product and a coproduct, an initial and terminal object. And now let me just say something to you about the product and coproduct. So you may have seen these things and we just call them products or coproducts, but they actually are, the, we don't get to pick them, right? The product and the coproduct is determined categorically from, uh, from a definition. So they may or may not exist, but when a product exists in a category, we know what it must be because it's what's called the limit of a diagram, okay? Um, and, and I guess I'll say a little bit more about this, but let me just kind of say what, what can happen though, right? okay? So some of the things that we'll need is that the product of the topological spaces is topological spaces and the disjoint union of topological spaces is topological spaces. And in fact, from this row, um, you'll see that the, the, these two things are exactly the same, okay? And the reason for that is because, okay, it turns out that there's two functors, right, from the category of topological spaces to the category of sets, right? Um, uh, uh, so there's the, actually there's two functors, there's one functor this way and two functors the other way. There's, there's a, uh, a functor called uh, the for, so there's the forgetful functor, and then there's the discrete topology, and then the indiscrete topology, which gives you, associate to any set, a topological space. So most people are familiar with the discrete topology. The discrete topology is where you give every set, uh, every subset, you declare it to be open. And the indiscrete topology is kind of the opposite thing, where we only declare the empty set and the entire set to be the only members of the topological space. Um, all right. But because there's these two fun these, these two things, so um, there's this adjoint, so that there, there's so a fancy way of saying this is that the forgetful functor has uh, has both a left and right adjoint, or is a left and right adjoint, right? Or you know, or actually maybe I should say is a right and left adjoint, because it has a left and right adjoint. Okay, and it turns out that left adjoints. Uh, preserve, uh, uh, so right adjoints preserve limits and left adjoints preserve co-limits and because of this property actually all the limits, all these objects in the category of topological spaces will be the same object as, uh, uh, we'll, 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 you, can, you can do the same construction here and it'll, it'll be, a, it'll be that's, that's how you get the topological space. Okay, so also we can do look at the, these things for pointed topological spaces. Now they're not the same. So the product of pointed topological spaces, you take the marked point to be the, the pair of marked points here. Um, there's this thing called the wedge product where you glue the two points and then the initial and terminal objects are both points. Uh, abelian categories, uh, sorry, abelian groups are, are a nice category and uh, their product and co-product happen to coincide. Same with their initial and terminal object. Uh, this is true for, of, of things that are more generally called abelian categories. Um, the category of groups has a product. The coproduct in the category of groups is the free product of the two groups. 
So this is the group where you just take all the symbols, right? Where you you take uh, you know symbols from G and symbols from H and just kind of like put them next to each other, and then and then declare a group that way. And that's called the the free product. Um, and that turns out to be the co-product in the category of groups. Um, this will come up later when th that these two things are related, right? And and these two things are related because when we when we look at there's going to be a functor from this category to groups called the the fundamental group. Um, okay, so commutative rings also has things, but sometimes uh, limits don't exist, right? Limits or co-limits don't exist. This one happens to be a limit, and um, this thing here is there. There's no terminal ring. There's no ring that all uh, that all the objects map to. Or I guess a unital ring, I should say. Um, if you count the zero ring, then I guess you do have a terminal object, which would be the zero ring. Um, yeah, so um, I guess we should consider one to be here. So maybe I should I should adjust this. This could be oh sorry, this could be zero the zero ring. I wrote the zero ring here. Okay, so um, all right. So so I'm gonna now. Uh, um, cut this here and then I'm going to say a little bit about products and their universal property to give a flavor for what universal properties are. Then I'm going to uh, give you the full definition of what a product and coproduct is uh, and, um, and then I'm going to see what I want to do from there. Okay, so but uh, we need these things because they're going to they're going to be constantly appearing uh, in, in this in this class.